Hello everyone and welcome back to IMO Reviews. Thanks to your vote on the People's Choice, today we are discussing Forrest Gump, directed by Robert Zemeckis and starring Tom Hanks, Robin Wright, Gary Sinesse, Sally Field and Michael T. Williamson. A simple man called Forrest Gump retells his bizarre life story up to this moment as he waits for the number nine bus. So this past vote on the people's choice was based on movies that are hugely beloved by many people that I just didn't get. And Forrest Gump was the winner. Apparently I am dead wrong on this movie. But I have to be honest, I personally have never really cared for this film. I've never really understood the fuss, and I certainly never understood why it was Best Picture winner of 1994. That was clearly supposed to go to Jim Carrey's The Mask. Somebody stop me! But on a serious note, is it really better than Shawshank? Because I personally always found myself thinking, where is this going? What is the point of this film? What is the plot, really? Is this all just for this girl who's kind of awful? But I was young. I might not have known any better. This probably is the first Oscar-winning movie I ever saw in my life. I might not have been old enough and mature enough to really appreciate what was being put on the screen. But I recently sat down to rewatch it. Have I changed my mind? Let's find out. Starting with the positives. It is definitely a lot better than I remember it being, especially the first half. I was really engrossed and in getting into it. I couldn't help but find myself smiling because it was so heartwarming and uplifting for a large portion of this film. It's also really funny. I laughed several times and it was always the quick-witted one-liner or the completely unexpected piece of dialogue that caught me off guard and made me laugh. It never felt like a matter of ha ha, look at this idiot. It was always endearing. The way that the football team say, go Forrest, and then say, stop Forrest. That's great. I love that. And it's just one of many. The performances are pretty good in Forrest Gump. Tom Hanks's performance, has it aged well? I think so, but only just. I can't lie. There are definitely a few ear scraping moments where it can feel a tad insensitive by today's standards. But as Tropic Thunder so rightly says, it ain't Sean Penn's I Am Sam. But actually, my favourite performances came from the likes of Sally Field and Gary Sinesse. They are absolutely outstanding for the parts that they have here. I think they work perfectly off of Tom Hanks' performance, and they really ground it in something quite real and tangible and even emotional. And of course, how could we not? talk about Bubba. The second Forrest meets Bubba, I immediately fall in love with these two. I want them to be together forever. Forget Jenny, Bubba is the one, Forrest. He is so damn lovable and innocent and just so sweet. You just want to hug the guy. It's the only part of the film that genuinely makes me cry. It's when Forrest is desperately running through the jungle trying to find Bubba. It just rips my heartstrings out. It's a wonderfully written friendship that's beautifully played out. The soundtrack to Forrest Gump seriously does not get the credit that it deserves. This is a stellar soundtrack. You get Elvis, you get Aretha, you get the Mummer and the Puppers, CCR, Buffalo Springfield, Leonard Skinner. It goes on, and my god is it beautiful to music nerds out there. Forrest Gump is home to several iconic scenes that are just fundamentally cinema by this day and age. Run, Forrest, run! How many of you as a kid either shouted that at someone who was running past you, or had it shouted at you while you were running? That's something pretty special when you can break through to reality like that and be a memorable quote of over 20-something years. And there is a very interesting aspect to Forrest Gump that I never really picked up on until this current rewatch, and that is the potential that Forrest might be an untrustworthy narrator. As we know, he is a little bit slow, and several of the facts that he states seem to be a little odd, or not quite right. He mentions that it rained for four months without stopping in Vietnam. It's played as a joke, but when you think about it, is that likely? It's not the only questionable thing that he mentions. Did he really meet all of these famous people, or do all of these incredible things? Because 
Surely people would recognise him if he did. It's a very interesting angle, and it's very subtly done. You probably will just trust Forrest, but there's a lot of clues to suggest you shouldn't. And equally, that feels like a good point to pivot to the negatives on, because if that is the case, then Jesus, that really does remove pretty much any point of the film at all, because at that point, it's just stuff. Stuff that might have happened, might not have happened. Pretty unsatisfying as an audience member, if you ask me. So take that one how you will. I certainly think it's an interesting idea. I don't think it's the most satisfying idea, though. And as we dive into the negatives, I've only really got two issues with the film, but they're two pretty big issues. Numero uno being Jenny. I really don't like Jenny at all. She doesn't care about Forrest, she just likes that he likes her. And that's quite manipulative, and she pretty much uses him throughout the entire film. And this poor sod just doesn't deserve that. To give you a grasp of how poorly her quote-unquote love for Forrest is portrayed, when Forrest gives Jenny his war medal, Mrs. Iamo said, Oh no, don't do that. She'll sell it for crack. That's the natural reaction to that scene. You're not endeared, you're not hopeful, you're worried she's gonna screw him over again. Thankfully on that occasion she doesn't, but she still does later on in the film. She seems to finally come to terms with how she feels about Forrest, and she sleeps with him. And it's actually quite nice, it's romantic, it's what we've all been waiting for, right? Wrong. She has to go and be a drama queen again, and she runs away with no reason. There literally isn't a reason, but she just runs away again. Why? What is wrong now? And then she comes back and she's got AIDS and a child? What? Did she have the illness before she slept with Forrest? Because if she did, that's pretty messed up. And is Forrest definitely the dad? Or are you just using him again? It's horrible. At least I think it is. <laughs> I haven't cared for her or this relationship from the get-go. As Jenny meets her end, you can tell the film is trying so desperately hard to make you cry, but my eyes were drier than the Sahara Desert. And equally, that time in between Jenny leaving and coming back with Forrest going on that endless run, it really feels like the film starts to run out of ideas, and it just starts tagging on other things that Forrest could have been a part of. So in conclusion, I'm gonna give Forrest Gump an 8 out of 10. It is a very good film. It's very funny, and it's quite original with some interesting characters and stories that will engage you. I have definitely lifted my score. Originally, I probably would have been about a high six, a low seven for this. Thank you for watching this review. Please be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and please do hit the comment section as well. Have you seen Forrest Gump? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you haven't had enough of this crazy ginger, well, you can always click on these suggested videos right here and get yourself lost in an IMO wormhole. But if not, take care, and I look forward to seeing you on the next review.